David Gilmour on guitar, Nick Mason on drums, Richard Wright on keyboards, and Roger Waters on bass guitar. This is the music of Pink Floyd. Get it at the very best record store on Aviation, Artesia Boulevards, in Redondo Beach. Pink Floyd, so unique, so hot, so musically sound that you won't believe your ears. Columbia Records and Tapes brings you one of the greatest LPs released this year. You Pick up animals on Columbia Records and Tapes, the very best record store on Artesia and Aviation Boulevards in Redondo Beach, where you can get animals on record and tape. Roger Waters explains the Floyd's new album, Animals. The front cover of Animals features a picture of Battersea Power Station here in London, with a pig flying between the enormous chimneys. So why Battersea? I think it's a very, I think it's a very nice building. It's very doomy and inhuman. It's a very doomy picture as well, isn't it? Yes. Very sort of depressing, oppressive. Yes. Is that the the general atmosphere that you wanted to convey for the album, or was it just? A... Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I can't. I quite like their very crude symbolism of Battersea Power Station anyway. I like the, you know, I like the four phallic towers and the idea of power. I find rather appealing in a strange way. But why the pig between the uh, phalluses? Um, Well, that came up because of that little song about, you know, it's the, that's that's the flaw, you know, the um, the pig, the flying pig. I don't know. I have, I've never tried to put it all into words, really. The flying pig is the symbol of hope. The opening sequence of the album, the, the acoustic bit, is, for you, um, almost a rare love song. Yes, this is true. That's why I, I've written a lot of love songs. Yes, but this is, they tend know, not to find their way onto... Uh, there was a certain amount of um, doubt as to whether that one was going to find its way onto this album. But I thought it was very necessary. Otherwise, the album would have just been a kind of scream, you know, of rage. But it is a very direct yes. love song, I mean, for you. Yes. Um, well, I'm in love. Let it be said that although the violence is tempered with um, sadness, and even a smidgen of compassion here and there. It is a very violent album. And it's, you know, when you're doing... And they're, th they're quite violent songs. And so I think that's why the music is a bit punchier than the normal stuff is. I've had, that, I've had the uh, idea of animals in the back of my mind for many years. Many years. Well, it is a kind of old chestnut, really, isn't it? Uh, just sometime during the middle of the recording, it seemed like the right thing to tie it all together. And it gave me the lead to rewrite the lyrics to sheep, Raving and Drooling and turn it into Sheep. Because Raving and Drooling was just another shout, but it was a rather incoherent shout of abuse in a way that Pigs is a fairly, well, Pigs is a kind of fairly um, compassionate scream of abuse, if you can scream abuse in a compassionate way, just by virtue of the last lines yeah, of each verse. Um, 
where it's raving and drooling as it used to stand for it's just a real, you know. Side two of animals starts off with a track called Pigs, three different ones, and one of the verses mentions anti-pornography campaigner Mary Whitehouse. I kept throwing that verse about Mary Whitehouse away. I've been throwing that verse away for about 18 months, but I never managed to write anything else, you know, and I kept coming back to it and changing it a bit, and it worried me a lot all the time, because I thought, really, you know, she doesn't really merit it. She doesn't really merit mention, you know, she, except that in a way she does, you know, and I think uh, the reason maybe that I didn't want to do it, use it, even though I'd written, I obviously did want to do it, otherwise I'd have never written it in the first place, but the worries that I had about it. I was going to say that I didn't think that she really merited the uh, attention. The attention. No, well, she doesn't really merit the attention, but, you know, she is really a cry. I mean, she is a terribly frightened woman, isn't she? Don't you think? Frightened? Yeah, terrified. And why does she make such a fuss about everything if not if she's not motivated by fear? Why doesn't she just, you know, quite get on with She's frightened, isn't she, that we're all being perverted? <coughs> Actually, yes, maybe you're right. Maybe the, certainly the lyrics are easier to understand. But they're not... Uh, why I say it's less direct is because they are not a direct expression of my feelings, as the lyrics on which you were, were here were. They're and it, more of them anyway are kind of put into a third person, you know, and about um, more distant events particularly something like sheep, right, which has got nothing to do with me at all, really. It's a, it's a kind of weird tract, of a kind of weird, slightly jumbled, you know, tract. It's a kind of admonition and uh, a warning, and a, but it's not really, you know, because it's so confused. It's a song, a song about revolution, Nick. Revolution? Yeah, that's what that's about, mate. Eh? Well, you certainly, with this album, lost your uh, space cadet image. Oh, no, we'll never lose that. People will think, people will think that this is about outer space. I mean, people thought, I know it was a bit confusing because it was called the dark side of the moon but if, if anybody can think dark side of the moon is a space space cadet album they'll think anything is i mean you couldn't you couldn't hope to find an album that was more about more earthly could you really mm. except for that one phrase you know i'll see you on the dark side of the moon it's really it's all terribly not terribly but very down to earth. One of the things that, that's come out all the way through this thing is that you have this great ability, and I use the word bastardize, and you disagree with that, to change lyrics to yeah. suit. It's one of the uh, great abilities that you have to change things. Um, and the concept of the album, I mean, the, the, the sound of the album is certainly um, a lot different from anything else that you've ever done. Is this something that happens in the studio? That, you know, the, the raunchy aspect of it sort of changes and, and becomes something else when you when you start working on it. Do you see what I mean? That it, it, it no, assumes its shape. So, certainly not for dogs. That was it was very clear what dogs was going to be like, except for the middle section, you know, with the synthesizers and the and the dogs through the vocoder, you know, that bit in the middle of dogs. Um, it was, we were quite clear what that was going to sound like, really. I know, I wanted, you know, there are obviously things that developed in the studio, like, I don't know, the sound behind the guitar solos. There's two kind of up, fairly up-tempo solos of Dave's. There's one in the first half and one in the second half with lots of tom-toms in the background. Mm -hmm. You know, those sounds developed while we were recording it, but basically we knew what the arrangement was going to be, more or less, anyway, and we knew what it was going to sound like before we started, because we'd been doing it live. 
with slightly different words and in a shorter form than it is now mm. for a long time. And uh, the same with sheep. Pigs is, had never been done before. Eh? And that did change a lot because when we started recording, it was only, you know, a song sung to a strummed acoustic guitar. So that grew a lot in the recording. Okay, finally. Um, but when, uh, sorry. sorry. But obviously, when something is called pigs, you know, and it's got the big oink on the beginning of it, it's gonna, you know, that. And when it's got, and when the lyrics are like they are, and it's, it has to sound kind of like it does. So you can't, you know. So go on, carry on. Right. I was just going to ask. Finally, I know it's probably a little early to look to the future. Mm -hmm. I know you're a band that does look to the future. Mm -hmm. um, this tour that is being planned yes. is getting terribly complicated. Yes. That's right. Um, the album has, I think, been a complicated process to get that right. Yes. Um, what do you see yourselves doing? A very trite question. But what do you see yourselves doing in the, the future? Because the Pink Floyd gig machine is becoming enormous. The process of recording is becoming more and it's more It's not. The, the gig machine hasn't grown measurably in the last two or three years since we started using movies which was what three years ago four years ago something like that that was the last major thing we use uh, in the quad stations we now carry a, a greater weight with us simply because we were what we were taking before was inadequate yes but the degree of um sound sophistication it hasn't changed in the last four or five years it really hasn't key packs or? well yes but I mean that's you know what's a few key packs is <laughs> <laughs> yes but I mean what can we've you always no we've always yes it's true we've always but we've always been like that we have always tried within our means um, to get it working as well as we could and to make the sound as good as, as we could. And we failed lamentably on many occasions. In fact, we reached a kind of peak a few years ago, and then we completely lost control of it all, and I think it's back in under control now, you know. We're making some of the right decisions again now. There was an Earl's Court gig a few years ago where we reached a real kind of peak, considering the acoustics of the place. We'd really got it under control. And... Uh, it was very good and after that you know we changed our PA and we didn't get it quite right and we were saving money by buying cheap mixes you know and things like that you know we were kind of buying you know 36 channel quadraphonic mixes for 1500 quid <laughs> which is just silly because of course the thing's going to fall to pieces and be endless trouble and but you know that's all we could afford at the time. Are you looking forward to going on the road? Um, the last tour you no, said before was not... No, the last tour was absolutely appalling. This one's going to be much better. Yes, I'm looking... I'm quite excited. So definitely I'm excited about the first... ten days or so. I don't know about the rest of it. But there are quite large gaps in between the gigs. We're not working all the time. So that's the great danger really is you know that you've you're booked into 50 cities albeit over a very long period of time and after the first 10 you know it's like, oh dear you know not again but um i think the show is new enough and with, with the new film you know that uh the, the film looks like it's going to be very good this time that's the charles skull thing yeah and uh Take might be provided a diversion from time to time. The Pink Floyd Story, a Capital Radio production, copyright 1977. <laughs>